If you're an American conservative, you know that the societal values we hold sacred are under attack. They are hanging in the balance. How can you protect those values? By staying informed. The closing argument will deliver news and supporting evidence you need to support and defend those values. Here's Paul Smith. Good morning. This is Paul Smith, your host of The Closing Argument. In these podcasts, we discuss some of the important and controversial moral, political, and legal issues that affect affect us and our families. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about global warming. And in particular, I want to talk about the book published by Roy Spencer, Dr. Roy Spencer, in 2018, called Global Warming Skepticism for Busy People. All right, the book's about 104 pages in length, but really it is a very good book. It's one of his later books. Dr. Spencer is one of those who admits that there is slight global warming, and he admits that the human burning of fossil fuels contributes towards global warming. But he he says that the contributions are very small and even benign is a word he used that they're they're not uh, they they do not support any any version that uh, we're headed for human caused catastrophic climate change. So uh, the book is good because it's a scientific book. It's short, concise, and he hits the main points. So it's a great introductory book, um, and I would recommend it to anyone who's interested in getting into this subject. One reason I want to mention it is because even though the book was published in 2018, in early 2022, uh, in January, he was basically, uh, the word he used was uh, demonetized. His website was demonetized by Google. Uh, Google had sent out a a message that they were were going to uh, do something to stop the climate skeptics from presenting their point of view. And and so he was making a little bit of money with ads on his uh, his uh, his site and they they basically shut it down. He said I could appeal it, but he says it's not worth it. But but the point is that there is now has been a, a, a powerful effort to prevent the point of view of Dr. Spencer from being disseminated. So, so people ought to know that. Not only did this type of censorship uh, by high tech occur r- related to uh, Donald Trump and different things, but it's, it's applying to uh, various areas. Now, uh, in, in Dr. Spencer's book, he, he says that there are basically five big questions that he thinks should be answered. And you can guess from who he is what his answers would be. But here they are. He says, one, is warming and associated climate change mostly human cause? And of course, he would say no. Two, is the human caused portion of warming and associated climate change large enough to be damaging? And he will say no to that as well. Three, do the climate models we use for proposed energy policies accurately predict climate change? And he says no, too. That one, if, if you get into it, as he, he does a little bit, the, the models the IPCC comes up with are notoriously wrong. They overestimate uh, climate change and global warming. Uh, four, would the proposed policy changes substantially reduce climate change and resulting damage? And the answer, again, that he says is no. If you actually will do an analysis of them, what it is they propose, the cost to do it, and and what effect they would have on either global warming or climate change, they have negligible impact and would be very expensive. And the fifth question, would the policy changes do more good than harm to humanity? And just the opposite, they would do more harm than good. So that's the focus of his book. So I would like to uh, just go through his book briefly and just mention some of his conclusions. They, they certainly concur with the conclusions I have reached after the, the several books I have read. Uh, I would point out a couple of things. On page one, he points out that uh, a man named Bill Nye, who has now been 
put to the forefront by some of the global warming extremists as a, as a science guy. Uh, he, uh, he disputes it. He calls that what Bill Nye does is fake science, and it, but it's acceptable because of its politically correct point of view. So you might, when you see Bill Nye, you might know that that uh, Roy Spencer has has called him really, uh, you know, not competent in that area at all. And uh, uh, Dr. Spencer brings out the point that the bias that is so strong uh, among the environmental extremists it makes it increasingly difficult for open-minded citizens to access the full spectrum of views on this subject so that they can become better informed. See, that's what happened recently when they demonetized his, uh, his site on Google, making it hard for people to get the information. Uh, Mr. Uh, or Dr. Spencer says this about publishing. It's not just that Google and other high-tech people uh, censor the views they don't like. He says it's also hard to get material published. This is what he wrote on page six of his book. Uh, publication of bad science is one problem, but another problem is the active suppression of good science. This has been happening for many years in climate research, where papers submitted for publication by skeptics, such as himself, are rejected outright for what would be only minor objections if they were in alarmist papers. And when one study, which of which he was co-author, he said, was peer-reviewed and eventually published in the journal Remote Sensing, the editor of that journal then resigned under pressure. Dr. Spencer said, quote, his resignation was mostly most likely forced by a single influential alarmist scientist who had financial leverage over the editor's funding. Someone had to be punished for letting the paper pass peer review. And so he is of the, the view that there have been many good papers suppressed. So if you're out there trying to find the science, one reason you may have difficulty is because of this suppression. If, in, if you want to sum up Dr. Spencer's view, he does it pretty well on page eight of his book. He says, we, can't, we really can't know with any level of confidence how much recent warming has been caused by humans. Even if the fraction of warming that is human caused is 100% the rate of warming, is harm, this is hardly alarming. So when we talk about science, remember that not all of science is created equal. When it comes to climate change, there's a large element of faith involved in claims of human causation. Anthropogenic global warming has become the new religion of the environmental sciences. That is a condemnation of that whole scientific movement. Uh, in page 11 of his book, he, he talks about the claims of, of extreme weather and, and points out that, you know, people, they don't have a, a good scientific basis for blaming weather events on, on humans. These increase, he calls, actually, there's not support for there being increased number of extreme weather events. He, he talks in page 12 about global sea rise and as I've mentioned in other programs, there, there's no question there is a small amount of sea rise that has been going on for at least a couple of hundred years, maybe thousands of years, but, but it's, it's very small. He, he calls, uh, he says, the, uh, it's about one inch per decade is what he said. And he said he was able, to, from what he has found, that the human causation uh, part of it would be about a third. So that's a third of an inch a decade, uh, according to him. So, uh, so the humans may be having some influence on sea rise, he admits, but very small. So not enough so that Obama needs to worry about uh, sea rise hurting his property on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so, and, and then again, on page 13, with regard to the extreme weather events, 
He says the modern day blaming of weather events on human caused climate change is at a minimum intellectually lazy and is probably more aptly described as journalistic malpractice and fear mongering. All right, another thing he mentioned going on to page 33 of his book, he talks about greenhouse gases. And, and I think greenhouse gases have come to have a negative connotation, but you need to take a step back, he points out, because it is the greenhouse gases that actually create our atmosphere that, uh, that, that allows us to have life. So uh, greenhouse gases per se are not bad. And uh, I, I would just point that out. On page 52 of his book, he talks a little bit more about the IPCC, that is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and on government-funded uh, science studies. He points out that that's happening. He, he points out that the IPC is a biased scientific uh, information dispenser. And he, he mentions the climate change, which uh, a climate gate event of 2009, which exposed the IPCC for manipulating data and interfering with the peer review process to keep skeptical papers out of their scientific journals. Uh, now, he again, in his book, he, it's really a broad book that covers a, a wide variety of the, the smaller subtopics in climate change. Uh, he talks about CO2, and he again concludes, as I've discussed in other uh, podcasts, that all CO2 produced by the U.S. will have an unmeasurable effect on global, global temperatures by two, uh, 2100, the next century. Uh, another thing he discusses is a case, the case of Juliana versus United States. And he was worried about that case. It basically seems to be kind of like the United States versus Massachusetts, only, only worse, where basically uh, the, the, the case was brought to, to find that humans were causing catastrophic climate change. He was very worried about that case and the effect it could have. This is in 2018. Ultimately, in 2020, uh, it did reach a conclusion, and it did. It, it that is in in a. I think this is the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and uh, I, as far as I know, it has not gone to the Supreme Court, but it has reached basically the conclusion that humans are causing catastrophic climate change. So all I would do is point that case out to you. You may hear more about it at some point. He disputes the factual findings that are a part of that. So a couple more things in his book. Um, on page 77, he points out that there is little or no reason to believe that there are long-term changes occurring outside the realm of natural variability, with res that is, with respect to extreme weather events. And uh, he points out how every time there's a there's a major storm, whether it's a snowstorm or, or a drought or whatever, the extremists want to blame it on humans and what they're doing to the atmosphere. But he, he says there's no ba scientific basis for such extremism. And finally, he mentions in pages 93 and 94, he, he brings up the topic of the Antarctic ice sheet. He says it's in balance. Some have accused or made the allegation that it's that it's melting rapidly and is gonna cause a substantial global warming. He disputes that. And he cites uh, an, a NASA glaciologist, Jay Zawali, who believes that the Antarctic ice sheet is currently in balance with gains from increased snowfall offsetting losses from the melting uh, base of the ice sheet. So he just there's no basis for it, he said. And he goes into talking uh, about acidification of the ocean. But the ocean is not acidic. And, and if he, he explains a little bit what that means, uh, they, they measure the, the ocean anywhere from zero to 14. And if it's above, uh, excuse me, if it's, uh, uh, let's see, seven or higher, 
uh, if it's above seven, it's not acidic. If it's seven or below, it's acidic. Well, it is 8.1.